It's amazing. Keeps growing, keeps growing. It's vibrant, it's crazy. It's like, it's like wow, dude. I need to stop maybe <laughs> here and to see other things. I was just the office lady sitting in the office, typing every day, like bringing the papers from one table to another. And that's how the, the life goes. And it was very, very boring. That's why I decided to make this big change. The reason I came to this city is because my sister is here. And uh, my parents are not far away from here. Only three or four hours if I take the train. And in the future, we're, me and my sister are going to take our, our parents to also live in Shenzhen city. When I first came here, there was something that you would hear all the time. People talked about Shenzhen speed. Actually, I haven't heard it in years, but 10 years ago, people talked about it all the time. And it was basically, literally, like you would see a whole floor in a building go up in a day. Um, so a uh, 20 story building, 20 days are the buildings there. And I've many times I'd gone home during the for summer break or, or during Christmas time. And when I come back, there's a whole new building, even whole new roads to get around. I tell the taxi driver, turn left here and realize, ah, the road's gone or there's a new road. in Shenzhen it's very old and very, it's a very small like a small town not as as good as now as we can see the tall buildings and red many cinemas and anywhere else we can go it's very easy and convenient and, and but in the past when I was a young girl no bus no no bus no taxi and no the subway yeah subway was built when I was 20, 12 years old the first time I got on a bus from one place to another in Shenzhen, I was totally unprepared for how long that bus ride was going to be. And, you know, I was sort of late to, to get to a religious service. It was the Jewish New Year. And I was sitting on this bus looking out the window thinking, we must be there soon. The city can't be that big. You know, we just left all the buildings behind. We seem to be in a totally green wilderness area now. And then all of a sudden we're back into like what seemed like a whole new city. I think I was just confused by how big the place actually was. In the past, uh, there's no tall building and uh, not, not so many houses or apartments, just some, just some, how do you say, just some flats, yeah, but with one, one or two grounds, yeah, so we just live along the, the river, yeah, it's very easy, yeah, and only, maybe, this is a big room, uh, and with a toilet, a, a, ki a kitchen, and no more other rooms. This is actually an urban village right now, this, including the square, and these are buildings that are not so tall. Um, I think basically what happened is that there used to be a group of people who um, bought the land with very little money or just somehow inherited the land from their, their parents, their grandparents, and they owned the land before the price of housing, the price of uh, land started to go up like crazy in Shenzhen. And they built houses, like they built small houses and buildings like these. Um, and then the price started to go up and they are very smart people. So they started renting out these to others and they would, they benefited a lot. But this is a small group of people. This is what we, these are people that we call local Shenzhen, local Shenzheners who 
who actually have enough money. These people have enough money for probably for their next two or three generations to, to live on without working. I guess to someone I would just, I would describe it as um, a poorer, more colorful, smellier part of town. Because <laughs> de it definitely is very, the villages are definitely alive. They're alive with like, literally like all kinds of things and creatures and then like all the things that are there that you can eat and, and then of course like alive with like sights and sounds and smells and all kinds of um, people really everywhere. It was a, a city that was built to uh, transition China from you know, old school Maoist uh, collectivist communism to uh, a sort of new concept for what China could become in terms of uh, a country that engaged with the world in trade, in commerce, uh, and essentially in capitalism. And uh, you know, the, the location of the city is across the river from Hong Kong to take advantage of trade with Hong Kong, which is a, a, a very international city. Um, so I, I basically see Shenzhen as, as a materialistic city. Uh, if you come to work in Shenzhen for like a year, for example, you can save up a lot more money than you can, say if you worked in my home city, Kunming, a lot more, twice or even three times, but depending on the type of jobs you have. This is a city where the Chinese and the foreigners come to make money. They're here to make money. They're here to accomplish something. Uh, actually, one of my very first projects as a consultant was in a factory helping them uh, set up a new location, hire workers. It was uh, to build an inspection team within a factory. And coming from the U.S., I remember uh, we worked very hard to make sure that they had a very good sleeping accommodations, that their work was scheduled very well. They worked only eight hours a day. And uh, we actually had a revolt within our employees. Uh, they were upset. Um, they didn't want to work only eight hours a day. They traveled, they came here from very far away. They came to Shenzhen to work. And they wanted to work like 16 hour days. Uh, they didn't have friends here. They didn't came, come to socialize. Their mission was to come here, work as hard as they could for a few years and go home with some money. Its reason for being is, is basically to make money, to do business, to do trade. Um, and that's what a lot of people come here for. Okay, that's fine. They come to make money. This is a city that was created to do that. They plan the city actually really well. So economic in, in the economic part, Shenzhen is amazing. It's an amazing city. I'll give you the example of my city, which is my city is 480 years old, and uh, it, it's I, I, it's nothing compared to this one. It's nothing. Like in 480 years, we haven't been able to do as much as this city has done in 30 years. 
Because every time if, if the weather is rainy, the, mud, the house it gets very dirty because it's made of mud. Very, very original one. You cannot imagine that. How can Shenzhen like such a city? 30 years ago or maybe 20 years ago, it changed a lot. Very, very different. Yeah. In, in Shenzhen city, people are, most of the people are from other places. So we are equal. It's not in Shanghai or Beijing. There are so many uh, original people. So pe the, the people can say, hey, we don't welcome you. But in, in Shenzhen city, we are new. We are all new. We all don't really belong here. So people are very equal. Because it has a short history and uh, it's an open-minded city. Basically, I think because it's, it's young and it needs new blood and in flow into the city. Yeah. Because in Guangzhou, they speak Cantonese. And if you don't speak Cantonese, some people will despise you. They really will. And it's the same when you go to Hong Kong. If you don't speak English and Cantonese, if you speak like men Chinese, some people will not answer your question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have 18 staff in our, of our department, but people are from eight countries. Eight countries within 18 people. So it's really amazing. Shenzhen is a place that welcomes everyone. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking to a Chinese person and ask where they're from, I'm usually expecting that they're from somewhere other than Shenzhen. But if they tell me that they were actually, if they're from here, they were born in Shenzhen, then I'm usually a little surprised. If you go in the street, you talk to any Chinese, you ask them, where are you from? They will be like, I'm from Hubei, I'm from Chongqing, I'm from Beijing, I'm from blah, blah, this place, this place, this other place. Nobody's actually from here. Uh, it's very beautiful and you can you can see Hong Kong from there and the air, air is very good and um, at the weekend you can see many many people just walk along the seaside it's beautiful and you think is this is a life to try different cities in China or other other countries yeah I want to move <laughs> I see it as home in terms of this is where I live now but I don't see it as a place to settle down I, I have never met someone that actually said oh I feel at, I feel at home here like I've never I don't know I've never met any foreigner that actually said oh I want to live here I feel this is my home no, because I want to finish my PhD, so I have that in plan, and to finish that, I think the best option is to go back to Italy. I use the word home, I say, oh, I'm going, usually if I leave, I'll say, oh, okay, I'm going home, which means I'm going back to Shenzhen. Um, but I think, you know, Los Angeles is my home, and uh, eventually I, I do plan to go back there. Shenzhen is a very good, kind of like a port for people to land on when they come to China. It's easy to to exit to Hong Kong, it's easy to come in from Hong Kong. Um, I see some of them developing, going further into the mainland after a couple years here. I also see a lot of them leaving after the first year or second year here. A small number of them end up staying for like more than two or three years. I met some people here I really liked. But they're leaving. It's like every three, three months, I have to say goodbye to someone. 
I don't feel good about it. You know, the world is so big. Today you're living maybe in the whole life. We're not gonna meet anymore.